welcome back guys in this uh, program what we are going to see is uh, we are going to see the idea of sensors in android uh, there are three different types of sensors in android uh, we have the motion sensor environmental sensor and position sensors all right but let me not take much about this in this video itself in this video i'm just going to do a first part of that program the first part of the program is to do a dice program uh, in that one i'm going to put two pictures and when you roll the dice i'm going to make sure that two pictures will give you a value uh, like from one to six like how our dice normally works so uh, in order to use that i'm going to use the first sensor which is mentioned here that is the motion sensor why i'm going to use motion sensor is because i want you to shake the phone and once you shake the phone i want the dice to be rolling and uh, you want i want the uh, two numbers to be generated so uh, the specific part of the motion sensor what we are going to use in this class is uh, accelerometer and uh, some of the sensors are hardware based and some of the software based ones and whatever the sensor is android will give you the raw data from these sensors so that you can use it in your application and android provides two keywords which i'll be talking about more in the second video so let's start with the program so that we will uh, we'll do the first part of the program which is just to bring two pictures here and when you write down i'm going to make it on click of a button later in the second video we'll make it into the accelerometer part so let's start with the program For this, I've started a, a created a new project called Sensors Demo, and I am in the first page. So let me begin with the design part. In the design, please note I'm going to keep very simple ones. Just going to put one label, uh, two pictures, and one button. And uh, when you click on the button, I'm going to change those two pictures to give the roll, uh, which means to make the roll, so that you can get two different random numbers. So let's begin with the design part, then we'll go to the code part. So I'm going to remove this hello world, which is there, and. Uh, uh, this is the screen size of my emulator and here in the constraint layout I'm going to convert it into a linear layout um, let's convert that into a linear layout and I want to convert that linear layout to a vertical one and then let, let's begin I want to first put a text view number one and second thing I want two pictures one right next to each other the uh, horizontal way not the vertical way so i'm going to put one more uh, linear layout inside that which is having the horizontal uh, view and inside that horizontal linear layout i am going to put two image views two image views i'm going to drag and drop inside that and before we begin with this part i wanted to know that uh, i'm not going to use uh, numbers like text views to display the number i'm going to use a picture itself it'll be easy it'll be looking good to use uh, dice pictures now uh, in order for that you need to download dice pictures from the internet and put it on the um, in your project so to keep it simple to make it simpler i have uh, put already created a zip zip file which has all the dice six dice images uh, there in your uh, sac hyphen image dot in so please use this url and uh, let me highlight it for a minute okay please do go to this url sac hyphen emit dot in slash dice dot zip uh, what this will do is it will download a dice dot zip into your system please download that and once you have downloaded it let's go to the place where it is downloaded i have a dice dot zip in my system i'm going to just extract whatever is here i'm going to just say uh, extract whatever is there i have kept six dice pictures okay uh, if you want you can see a preview of this these are going to be six dice pictures starting with dice one till dice six you can see the pictures have already these things so i didn't want to download it from the internet so i've just i've got, I downloaded it from the internet and put it in sac hyphen image so they can directly take it from here if you didn't like this image you can use your own image also but make sure that the name goes in this fashion i want the name to be in this fashion so that the code would be much simpler so i'm going to copy these uh, six images and i'm going to go back to uh, my project i'm going to my project now Please note, I need, I have downloaded pictures, so you already know where to put those. I'm going to go to resources folder and I'm going to right click on the drawable folder and I'm going to just paste them. And uh, please note, if you have seen the name of the files, they all follow the rules because all are small letters and uh, no cap letters, no weird characters are there. So I'm just, I've copied that and they are all proper names. So I need not bother about it. I'm just going to right click and say paste. When, when it is asking for paste, please note that it is asking to do different folders, drawable, drawable hyphen B24. All right, uh, 
to avoid confusion anymore please don't use the v24 version because if you put v24 it is something which gives you different types of images for different types of screen so let's not use that please put it in drawable always uh, if you are putting in v24 it's not a problem but then you will have to create a different for example small screen size what will be the picture so which means if you put it in drawable v24 you have to put corresponding different sizes into drawable also but if you put it in drawable you need not do the reverse so i'm going to use this one i'm going to click on ok and when it asks is this a flow folder i'm going to say ok and all my six images should be there in the drawable folder now starting with dice one till dice six dot png so pictures are ready let's go back to our design i'm going to drag and drop the first image view inside please note this linear layout the linear layout which is horizontal when i put that you see that all my pictures are available which are there in the drawable folder i'm going to just choose randomly one it come big i'll fix that later let's finish the second image view also i'm going to drag and drop make sure that this comes inside this same thing i'm going to choose another image i'm going to click on ok so i have two dice images and i know it takes the entire screen we'll fix that shortly and the next part is i need a button so i'm going to put a button after this linear layout so please do make sure that it comes after the linear layout but inside the vertical linear layout I know it's not showing right now let's fix that let's choose each and every control which is inside the linear layout and let's give a margin uh, let's give the layout margin as let's say 10 dp or something all right so that's first thing is done second thing these two images what you have here it's taking the entire screen that's not right and I don't want it so much so let's make it into a proper uh, square so I'm going to put 150 dp I think that's enough width and same thing 150 dp height so now uh, that thing is fixed click on this linear layout and make sure that the height is wrap content so that the entire content is wrapped inside so now you've got somewhat a similar design and if you see that the difference between these two are too close to each other so let's fix that also let's give the margin and uh, let's keep the margin as again 10 dp it has a little bit difference you can reduce it however you want let's say uh, 5 dp it's okay but as long as there is a space between them so now all these things are done the next part is uh, i want to make sure that it comes in the center of my screen so i'm going to click on the linear layout also i'm going to change the gravity of this entire thing to come to the center of my page that also is done now let's uh, design it uh, the the attributes part of it let's start with the first one text view uh, i'm going to put the text as senses uh, demo and i'm going to change the text appearance of it to be let's say display one a little bit bigger and i'm going to change this uh, the color to make sure that it is black and uh, you see that it is on the left side of the screen so let me put a gravity so that it comes exactly in the center so that is done the first part is done if you want you can make it bold also all right so let's just make it bold. so this is my census demo and then nothing to change here uh, let's go to the image <coughs> now please note that i need to give specific words to those images i'm going to put img dice one this is the first type which is going to be displayed and uh, i'm going to leave it as it is right now i'm not going to touch anything else uh, no other property i'm going to give right now second one i'm going to also change this to img dice two so that is also done now i have two dice images and uh, last one is the button let's fix that also the by id of the button i'm going to put it as btn roll and uh, i'm going to put the text as roll dice that's also done let's change the appearance so let me let me make it as large and bold that's enough so my design part is done and please note that every time we do the design uh, i know that it might look good here in your design itself but in the real phones it might be a little bit different okay in real phones there might be an issue with uh, with the size the screen size so make sure that if you choose different size here it all automatically reflects or it works well let's say five inch screen if it's a five inch screen it's okay it's working if it's a four inch screen which i have used still it's fine and if i choose something uh, which is lesser okay let's say 3.3 size it should the entire content should be visible that's our target here so uh, anyway that you should make sure that everything comes neatly before we go to the code part so the design part is done all i need is the code part so i'm going to just change to the code part now in the code part the first thing what i'm going to do here is number one i need to make sure that this i'm not going to talk to in the code at all i'm going to talk to these two images and this button 
so let's begin so let's globally create objects of uh, these three controls one is image view so i'm going to start with image view and uh, we are going to give the image view as img1 and img2 two image views second one is the button and uh, i'm going to give the button as uh, role btn done now as soon as the uh, activity is started i need to make sure that these uh, controls are assigned properly so i'm going to start with the first one img2 img1 is equal to find view by id r dot id dot img dice one first one is done next one img2 is equal to find view by id r dot id uh, dot img dice two so i've got two mappings last one is uh, role btn is equal to find view by id r dot id dot uh, btn role so I've done all these three things. Now the next step in our program is if you click on this button, if you click on this button, I would like uh, the two random numbers to be generated between uh, one to six. And uh, based on the number which is generated, I want those images which is there in my drawable to come here. So with that in mind, let's begin. Um, before I write the on click part, let's create a separate method for ourselves so that even if you click on the button or if you're going to shake the phone, however, I want the same thing to happen. I want the dice to be rolling two times. So let's to create a two, uh, sorry, one method which does this act actions irrespective of what uh, triggered it. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to create a simple method. Let's name it as public uh, void roll dice. This is our own method. Please note there's no method like this in the inside. Okay, in inbuilt in Java. So let's create our own. So first thing is first, we need two numbers starting with random values. So uh, I want two random numbers because the dice works that way. Uh, how to generate random numbers? You need you have an inbuilt uh, class called random, which can give you an integer value. By default, random ret returns between zero and one. We don't want that. I want to give a limit. I want to give an upper limit and I want to make sure that the value is generated. So let me start with int value one. Let's create it as value one. The first value, the first dice value. Okay, uh, how do I create that? I'm gonna call the object of new random. Okay, I'm not gonna stop with that. I'm gonna continue. New random is the object of the random class. From there, I would like something called next int. Please note, there's a method called next int which returns with a bound. I'm going to say I have a limit. I don't want random number in the sense totally random is not the idea. The random number between one and uh, six. So I'm going to say next int six. Please note this is also a mistake. Why I'm saying this is a mistake is uh, next int starts with zero. It generates a number between zero and um, five. If you see zero, one, two, three, four, five, six digits. So that is what the six indicates, which means I will not get exact answer. Sometimes the random value might be zero. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add one with it to fix that issue, which means if the random number generated is zero, I'll get the output as one. The last random number possible in that code is five. Five plus one is six. So I've got a random value between one to six in that code. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste that below because the only thing I'm going to change is it to value two. That's all. I want two random numbers to be generated, but the idea is still the same. So I've got two random numbers between one and six. Please note the plus one is because the uh, the bound, the uh, limit which we have given starts with zero. So that six indicates it will return six digits, uh, not six digits, six numbers, which starts with zero, one, two, three, four, or five. I just added one so that I get a dice value between one to six. Done. The second thing what I want to do is, uh, I want to set, for example, if the first value is coming as two, I want dice two to be put in image one. I hope you follow. All right, so let's start with that. Uh, and uh, if you remember the first classes, I've already told you that resources are considered as IDs. So I need to find which ID is dice two. Dice two is the name which I remember, but the system remembers it a different integer number, uh, a unique ID which is given to your uh, resources. So let's create int resource one the first resource how do i find the first resource so please note i have an inbuilt method called get resources from that i'm going to say get um identifier 
that's an inbuilt method please note it, re it requires three parameters i'm going to tell you what those three parameters are you can see that there in the design uh, string name type package name so i'm going to pass three things number one what is the name of your file okay if you know the name of my file is dice one dice two dice three like that it is there so i have already got the random number so if i concatenate the word dice with this number i'll get the name of the file the first thing second thing is the type it is a type called drawable because there are different types of resources and this identifier this resource is inside a folder called drawable and i'm going to pass that the third one is the package name so let's start number one identifier i'm going to say dice concatenated with the value which you just got value one come on what type of resource is it it is a drawable resource please note the spelling be very careful of the spelling the last one is the package name for that you just need to copy from the top you have your package name already there i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it here i'm saying in this package so make sure that you understand this uh, line this line is to make sure that i do not write code uh, every time you uh, run the program i'm not going to change the resource i'm going to find the resource based on the number which you have generated right now so value one i got that and concatenate that with this so for example if the random value generated is six i'll say dice six that's the name of the resource and it is inside the folder called drawable because that's a drawable type and inside a package called com.thomas.census.dem that's it i'm going to copy paste this entire thing once again below only thing i'm going to change is i'm going to create a second resource which has the second value code is still the same done the next two lines of code is going to be simple you're going to call this image view and i'm going to set the resource as resource one that's it so next code i'm going to write is img one dot set image resource please note what i'm supposed to pass within that uh, image resource is uh, the id so let me just show it once again set image resource please note i'm expected to pass the id which is an integer value which i already have res one same thing i'm going to do img2 dot set image resource resource 2 done so these are the six lines of code which actually gives you the output what we are looking for now all i'm going to do here is before even you click on the button as soon as you open the program i want this roll dice to be called so i'm going to just type roll dice as soon as the program is called which means uh, in the beginning if you see in the design i've already kept three and five as the number i don't want that i want as soon as the op program opens itself i'll get a new two random numbers that i can do now the last step of this program is roll btn dot set on click listener new view dot on click listener and inside that i'm going to just say call roll dice work is done so let's run the program and see how this, this works all right here's the program so you see uh, in the design actually i kept three and five here but as soon as the program ran roll dice is called so you get two random numbers here let me repeat it let me just click on the button and check whether it works so every time you click on the button i want random numbers to be generated and those numbers will be giving me corresponding pictures and the pictures will be kept here so here every time you click on the dice a new uh, dice image has been generated just like how we work we play when with dice so with this we have finished the first video in the next video what we have done here in this video with the uh, click on click of a button we'll be changing it with the sensor so when you change when you shake your phone i want the uh, dice to be rolling even if i don't click on the button in this program in this video we will try to do it using a sensor which is there in your phone in almost all our phones which is called as the accelerometer now uh, the target of this particular uh, video is to make sure that when you when you uh, shake your phone when you change the the position of your phone in such a particular manner that the sensor works and uh, the dice gets rolled based on your um, acceler accelerometer so before i uh, go to the actual code part of it let me just give you a brief overview because it is very important to understand what code i'm going to type so uh, in the last class i've already told you that different types of sensors are available and some of the sensors are hardware based and today what we are going to do is hardware based sensor which is there in almost all the phones and uh, i'm going to get data from the sensor uh, of your phone which is called the accelerometer and it gives me three data specifically i'll
I'll talk about those three data in a short while. And also I'm going to talk to something called Sensor Manager, which is going to help me talk to the hardware uh, from the application layer in your Android uh, architecture. And uh, regarding the accelerometer, what I said, uh, normally accelerometer gives three values to you. That's the raw data which is given to you. What, if, what we do with that is our uh, work. But if you see here, this in this diagram, you can see that uh, the phone is kept like this. This is the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis or the z-axis. All right. So when you keep your phone in an upright fashion or when you uh, tilt it, either way, accelerometer keeps recording it and that's how your phone knows whether it is in the normal mode or in the tilted or the landscape or the portrait mode so uh, that's the thing which accelerometer gives i'll show it to you in a short while but then before i go to the program itself there are a few things which i want you to know uh, the first thing is the meaning of the word threshold okay uh, to keep it simple uh, i've already written some definition that's the, the dictionary value the threshold is an amount or a level or a limit on a scale when the threshold is reached something else happens or changes now for example uh, i have uh, let's say that there's a phone on the table uh, not a phone anything can be there and imagine if i want to lift this phone up the amount of pressure i need to put on the phone is not equal to the amount of pressure which i'll put if i'm picking up a laptop I hope you got the difference uh, like for example the amount of pressure or the weight i need to put or the pressure i need to put to lift a phone is not equal to the same thing uh, of your laptop the laptop is a little bit heavier so i need to put a little bit more force but if, what what if i wanted to lift uh, 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 a bundle of books i need to put a little bit more pressure on to get that so the amount the the weight or the threshold in other words the uh, the particular reach if, if a particular uh, force is applied on the phone it gets pulled up and uh, that's the threshold i need to know that why i need to know that is how much of the phone has been tilted okay how much after how applying how many how much of pressure do you want the phone to get registered with that sensor so that's why i'm going to use that word called threshold so please remember that and uh, in the program what i'm going to write i'm going to keep two different variables one is for local one is for global so uh, in order to understand this uh, we need to know that accelerometer gives you basically three uh, values to you the three values are x y and z so the first time when you are running the app the phone is in this particular position right now even though even if your hands are not moving the accelerometer keeps registering that every time you uh, have it the phone normally has that so now what i'm going to do here is uh, imagine the phone is here right now and then later it went here so the last x y z i need to keep remembering but currently where it is should be recorded uh, when the sensor is changing so i'm going to keep local variable will be x y z when you are currently moving it and the previous one will be kept as global and it will keep changing every time you move your phone that's the first thing and then the time please note i'm going to calculate with the formula for that the formula is speed equal to uh, distance by uh, time so for that i need the time where when it was here when it was here so that will be the next one current time and the last updated time and the difference between these two also i need to keep remembering locally uh, and the globally available thing will be threshold and the most important formula i need you to remember is speed is equal to distance divided by time so with these things in mind let's start with the program uh, uh, i'll not be able to show it on the actual phone it will be blurry so let me show it in the emulator itself those who are using an emulator can try this others just listen and uh, here you can see that uh, there's a three dotted one let me click on it and you can see there are a lot of things about that particular emulator which is mentioned here out of that i am going to focus on one thing which you already know sensors and since this doesn't actually have a physical sensor there it is a virtual sensor so i'm going to click on the virtual sensor and you see the first thing which is put forward to me is accelerometer which shows a phone in a particular fashion and uh, we'll see that later uh, additional sensor there are a lo lot of other sensors available like ambient uh, temperature uh, magnetic field the proximity the light uh, the auto brightness stuff and the pressure and the relative humidity all these things are uh, I mean, i'm not saying that all these are available in every phone uh, every phone has its own sensors you know uh, some phones have gyroscopes some phones don't some phones has a magnetic compass in that some phones don't so these are the possible sensors which are uh, in your uh, virtual device i want to specifically talk to accelerometer in that part as i've already mentioned to you it gives me three values x y and z let's understand what is x what is y and what is uh, z so if i'm saying x if i move it this way this is x axis and uh, this is the y-axis 
and the last one z axis towards or away from us so three angles is what i have and i want you to also notice this side the accelerometer what will it return when you're moving your phone when you move your phone what happens to the accelerometer okay the accelerometer and the moment you leave it i hope this number you have seen in school a lot it's the gravitational force the speed of uh, gravity in earth okay uh, like for example if you take a ball or a particular object and you're dropping it from a particular uh, place the, the first second uh, before you drop it the speed is zero the moment you drop it the first second the speed is 9.81 meter per second the second uh, second when it comes at that time it doubles it with 9.81 into 2 and it goes on that's why the the farther you, you throw it from the, the faster it reaches here all right so that uh, i don't want to go into physics much but then remember i take the phone i move it and whenever i drop it the gravitational force towards the ground will be 9.81 y axis okay but if i rotate the device let's say i'm going to rotate the device uh, this way so the device is now rotated in a different angle all right uh, so what happens to the uh, accelerometer now okay x axis faces the problem x axis has the gravitational pull now not the y axis so here the y axis has the 9.81 meter per second square and gyroscope magnetometer all these things are all dependent on these uh, values so uh, i'm not going to talk much about uh, rotation but please note the moment is this what i want to know so right now if i if i do like this this is the shaking of your phone uh, i can't do uh, towards and away from me because it's not an actual phone in your actual phone i can do uh, this way this way or like this i either way uh, all the three axes can be accessible in an actual phone but not in an emulator emulator there's a limitation to what you can do but still shake movement is shake movement so you have got uh, x y and uh, z here when i move it here the x y z changes so when i was here when i was here i need to calculate those two and the speed and the distance between these two spaces i would get uh, distance and time if i get the distance and time i would get the speed so if i get the speed i'm going to see that's the, the speed in which you change will be considered as the shake so if that is above my threshold then i'll make the roll dice happen so let's go to the code part now i'm going to close this off let's go to the code part all right i'm not going to change anything in the design because there's nothing to do with the design all in the code only so uh, let's start first let's make sure that our program listens to a sensor so for that purpose i'm going to make sure that i have an interface called uh, sensor event listener so i'm going to implement that implements sensor event listener please note it comes from android dot hardware dot sensor event listener that's the package from which the sensor event listener comes and by now you would have understood why that error comes it's a it's an interface which means you need to implement all its methods also so let's implement its methods and you see there are two important methods there on sensor changed and on accuracy changed accuracy is if you want to set the accuracy but i'm not going to set the i'm going to just use the on sensor but i have to implement both the methods i'm going to click on okay so i've got on sensor changed and on accuracy changed i've got both the values so whatever i write here will be reflected or will, will be taken into consideration and the sensor changes uh, its values but please note nowhere i've mentioned it is the accelerometer sensor which i'm looking for this is for general for all hardware sensors all right it can be the ambient the light uh, ambient light or you can even be accelerometer or gyroscope whatever it is but that i'll be telling shortly so before i begin with that code let's do the global and the local variables i've already mentioned there are a few things which will be globally declared so if you remember that uh, the globally declared values would be x y z last x y z that's the globally declared value one next thing is i would like to know the uh, last updated time and also the difference in time i need three uh, three things so uh, let's start float i'm going to create a float value which is say last underscore x comma last underscore y comma last underscore z or z i've got three values next one i'm going to create two uh, long values which is number one uh, last updated time so i'm going to say last update time and uh, let's say difference in time 
these are the global variable variables which i require also please note i have just put an interface but i've still not used the first keyword which i told you in the first slide sensor manager so i'm going to call the sensor manager and let's name it as sensor manager small letter s all right so these are the global variables what i require now before I go to the actual sensor code, let's do this one here and make sure that this is generated as soon as or uh, initialized as soon as the on create is called. So let's go into the on create uh, and let's write the sensor manager. I'm going to say sensor manager is equal to there is a system service which is running in your phone, uh, which if you utilize, it will be working. So I'm going to say get system service and the service which I'm looking for is the sensors service. So I'm going to say sensor service done. Now, if you see the error is because you uh, you can see that the error is because it is sensor manager is required, but I got an object instead. Let's just typecast it done. Now you have got the sensor manager ready and working. Now let's go to the actual sensor code on sensor changed. Now the first condition what I'm going to write because please note this will react to all sensors in your phone. I don't want this program to react to all the sensors in my phone rather only for an accelerometer for that purpose i'm gonna write a simple if condition first if event dot sensor dot get type please note that get type is an int which is expected let's say it's equal to equal to sensor dot type underscore accelerometer so I'm going to just call sensor dot type underscore accelerometer. Please note, please understand this if condition before we proceed. Uh, what we have said is when the sensor changes in your phone, automatically this method will be called. So now as soon as the sensor has been changed and the trigger has been done, I need to make sure that only accelerometer I need to take into consideration, not each and everything. So I've just mentioned that get type if it is equal to accelerometer, then do this following block of code so let's write here as i've already told you uh, when the accelerometer uh, is a hardware which returns basic raw data to us and uh, since we have already seen it returns only three data to you one is uh, x y and z so let's take all those into respective values let's say float x where will i get that x please note whatever returns to you will give that value so i'm going to say event dot values please note what data type is event dot values it's a float array it has three values in it float of zero float of one float of two all right so why i'm saying this is x y z zero one two so let's start values of zero would be the x value what is returned from your accelerometer next float y is equal to event dot uh, values one this is the y value last one is float z or z event dot uh, values of two so i've got all the three current values and if you remember the local values what i require x y z i wanted local last x last y and last z i wanted global so that is done and the next one the current time uh, which i'm going to create here long current time is equal to to get the current time i'm going to use a system uh, object uh, the class I'm going to say current time in millis this will return the current time in milliseconds to your uh, variable so I've got all these things now all I'm going to do here is I'm going to write a simple if condition I'm going to see whether the sensor has changed in the last 100 milliseconds so I'm going to write if another if condition because I don't want the sensor to simply work because it will take my battery okay so let's start that part also I'm going to write if current time minus last update okay let's say minus last update time if it is greater than 100 milliseconds then do the remaining part of the code so please note what i have told is the current time minus the last updated time if it is greater than 100 100 uh, then you do all these things so i'm going to keep that and if that is the case what what do you want me to do okay so first i wanted to find the difference in time which i've kept on the top difference in time is equal to same thing current time minus last update time let's stop with that now uh, you've got this now i need to calculate the speed 
okay so please note how do i calculate the speed all right the next step is to calculate speed so let's create a floating point value called speed is equal to if you remember the formula in the beginning i told this distance divided by time so uh, the time is already given to you i need to find the distance if you want to calculate the distance please note how do i calculate the distance last position current position so if you have the last positions x y z i can put them together and make one number minus from the current position so i'm going to st start with the current position uh, i want the absolute value so i'm going to say math.abs uh, let's convert it into an absolute value please note uh, dot abs returns uh, int if your int is past long if long is past and float accordingly so i'm going to just say math dot absolute value of x plus y plus z all three combined current value minus last x minus last y minus last z all these values divided by difference in time so speed is equal to distance divided by time now please note the time is calculated in milliseconds so uh, let's fix it and make it into a uh, proper value so i'm going to say multiply in by 10000 so now i'll get a full value because it'll be a very uh, what do you call um, the very minute value which will not be equal to our threshold so i'm just multiplying with 10000 so that it becomes a little bit bigger value now my if condition is very simple if speed is greater than the threshold what you have mentioned so i think we have not created the threshold so let's create that uh, i'm going to create a threshold as a global value please note i'm going to create a private static final int because it's a constant value i don't want the threshold to be um, changed later that i can change in code itself not after the program has started i'm going to say threshold is equal to thousand that's the pressure i want you to apply and if the speed is greater than that threshold so i'm going to say if speed is greater than the threshold then what do you want me to do i want you to roll the dice okay so i'm going to write roll dice i'm going to call that method which we created in the last video done so this is what but then if you want this will only work one time i want you to continue to make it work so for that let's fix a few things let's say what is the current um, last updated time last update time will be right now is equal to current time next time you run the time would have elapsed so you would have got the new time so now i'm going to say last underscore x is equal to whatever right now is there as x and last underscore y is equal to whatever is there as y and last underscore z is equal to whatever z you have got right now done please note all you have done is you have set the program to start listening you have told this entire class to start listening but you have not told when to start listening and when to stop listening you just said implements this listener so let's do that and please note if, if i add this sensor listener uh, to your program and the program even if it is running in the background i don't want uh, the the accelerometer to be recording i don't want the accelerometer to keep rolling the dice so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say I want this listener to start listening when my app is activity is running and the moment the activity has stopped running or even if it is paused I don't want my accelerometer to be recognized so for that purpose what I'm going to do is I'm going to write two methods one I want to register this listener when uh, your activity is fully running and then when your activity stops the minute it stops I want that listener to be uh, unregistered so for that purpose let's start I'm going to start with uh, when to start listening and if you remember the activity life cycle the last stage of an activity being fully visible to you is on resume so I'm going to write on resume in that method I am going to say uh, sensor manager dot register listener so please note that's the method which i'm looking for and for that i require three parameters number one what uh, who's the listener number two uh, what type of sensor would you like to listen and uh, third one how much uh, sampling period uh, interval how long uh, the delay is how long of a delay is accepted so i need to pass three parameters starting with who is the listener please note i have asked this class to start listening so i'm going to say this is the listener second one what is the sensor i'm going to call the sensor manager i'm going to say get the default sensor whose name is sensor dot type underscore accelerometer 
and that's the second parameter the last parameter is i need to give the sampling uh, period so i'm going to call sensor manager not the object the class i'm going to say dot sensor underscore delay underscore normal i know it's a big code but let's take it one by one the first parameter what i've passed is the listener the second parameter what i have passed is uh, the type of sensor so for that i call the object of sensor manager and said get the default sensor called sensor dot accelerometer type accelerometer the last one what is the uh, sampling normal uh, delay okay so i'm going to say sensor delay underscore normal that's an inbuilt uh, constant so don't worry about it so these are the three things to register your listener to your uh, program now this is not enough this will be as soon as your activity is resumed it will start but as soon as the uh, user moves away from my activity i don't want you to listen so for that purpose i'm going to write on pause in on pause i'm going to call the same sensor manager and say uh, unregister listener i just need to pass the listener's name i know this class is listener so just unregister the listener that's it now let's run the program and see please note i recommend you use an actual phone than an emulator for this particular purpose but i'm going to show you the output using an emulator please try it with an actual phone all right the program is run and you see that this is the first part what we did uh, as soon as the program loads there is random numbers generated if you click on the roll dice button uh, the random number is getting generated or the dice has been rolled now let's see whether it, it registers with the accelerometer so i'm going to take the uh, the device here and i'm going to just move it for some time i see whether it, it recognizes Uh, please note the threshold should be above 1000 so the movement which I make must be a little bit fierce in order to make sure that it works so I hope you can see this that it changes when you move it vigorously because I've kept the threshold as 1000 so in your actual phone it doesn't require that much of a work uh, if you see in the actual phone uh, this is running right now and if I just it changes uh, this much is enough but then that threshold moment uh, what I am giving that threshold which is required the pressure which is required is a little bit more in your emulator so it might not work as you expect uh, but it works you just need to make sure that the threshold goes above 1000 so it works when you when you shake your device or the the sensor is working with, the, with this current program so with that we'll stop for this program if you have any doubts please do contact me and try to do this program on your own and uh, let me know what happens thank you guys